Are you a practicing dentist and do you have a written comprehensive financial and retirement plan that clearly outlines when you can afford to retire and what your retirement paycheck looks like? Well, the good news is I'm starting to see an increased number of dentists connecting with me from across Canada on LinkedIn and YouTube. So I thought I would dedicate the next three videos just to financial planning for dentists. Because when it comes to financial planning for dentists, it's way different than financial planning for doctors. My name is John Mokler, and I'm the founder of Mokler Wealth Management. And for the best advice on how to protect you and your family, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when we launch a new video. Now, here's the key difference between dentists and doctors. Almost 100% of dentists will be able to sell their dental practice. The numbers are actually flipped around when it comes to doctors. Close to 99% of doctors will actually wind down and retire, but they will not end up selling their practice. So for dentists, there's extra care that needs to be taken in the development and implementation of your financial and retirement plan. Does that make sense? Now, this is critical. Ideally, a dentist would like to sell the shares of their corporation to the incoming buyer. This allows them to qualify for the 850,000 plus lifetime capital gains exemption, meaning that the first $850,000 of the sale will be received on a tax-free basis. However, when someone is purchasing the shares of your dental corporation, they're also purchasing any hidden history or issues that are, aren't apparent prior to the sale of the practice. So some buyers would prefer to purchase the assets of the dental corporation. If this is the case, there is still a way of structuring the deal such that some of the incoming revenue will be, will be received in a tax preferred way. And that accounting procedure is called goodwill. Now, personal goodwill will exist with the dentist in the area of the dentist's expertise, knowledge, skill set, and of course, the relationships that they have with the customers in order to run that dental practice. You can view goodwill as a corporate asset, and you need to be able to identify that and set it aside because the goodwill will be a separate transaction from the sale of the corporate assets. Are you following me along here? So in this case, you got to make sure that the personal goodwill is identified, separated, from the sale of the corporate assets. Now, as a result of selling the assets of the corporation, you could potentially ask for a higher sale price so that the after-tax portion of the asset sale is in line with the sale of the shares. That way you're not out any money. Now, because a dentist is more than likely going to be selling their practice, you have to be careful in the time period leading up to the sale of the practice. So if you have assets inside your corporation that aren't being used to run the day-to-day -day operations of your practice, those are called passive assets. And if at the time of the sale of your practice, if those passive assets are less than 90% in terms of running of your operations of your business, then you could be offside and you wouldn't qualify for the lifetime capital gains exemption. And so you would need to restructure or purify the assets inside your corporation. Now, there are some provinces here in Canada that do support the idea of purification of your assets. There's other provinces where they frown on this accounting procedure. So you need to make sure you're working with a certified financial planner and a chartered accountant to make sure that the deal is structured properly. Now, the good news is, is that if you do sell the assets of your corporation, you still get to keep the shares of the corporation, which means once you decide to give up your license to practice dentistry down the road, you will, your dentistry corporation will be converted into an investment corporation and the sale proceeds from the sale of the, of the dentistry practice, you can now use that money to actually create a dividend for yourself as part of your retirement paycheck. So in summary, we've talked about the, you know, how to structure the dentistry corporation. We talked about the difference between the sale of the shares of the corporation versus the sale of the assets of the corporation. In the next video, I'm going to be getting into the, the whole idea behind protecting you and your family. And in the third video, I'm going to be getting into the reasons why you need to have a second corporation.
Now, again, some provinces inside the dentistry associations, they will not allow you to have a holding company. How I position this second corporation will still keep you in line with all of your dentistry associations. So if you're interested in the development of your own personal financial and retirement plan, click on one of the links below to apply to become my client. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and share it with a friend. And always remember when we design financial plans for our clients, we always make sure that your money outlives you in retirement.